Amen. I tell you what, the presence of God is so strong here in this place. I, I usually in in it. In, in this kind of atmosphere, I'll just go straight and start laying hands on people. But the Holy Ghost wants me to preach the word first. And then I'm going to lay hands on people and pray for you. So the Lord's going to touch a lot of people here this morning. And uh, if there's anybody here that hasn't ever been baptized in the Holy Ghost, I want to I want to pray for you to get filled with the Holy Ghost. And uh, But it's going to be an awesome time. So just jump in the word with me. Let's go to Luke chapter 3, verse 16. Luke chapter 3, verse 16. Everybody knows John 3.16, but we need to know Luke 3.16 just as well. Luke 3.16. John answered, saying unto all of them, I indeed baptize you with water, but one comes mightier than I, uh, the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to unloose. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. And then let's turn over to Matthew 3.11. It says the exact same thing here. John, the Baptist ministry, was to prepare the way for Jesus. And it's amazing that his message was Jesus was going to come and baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Of all the things that John the Baptist could have focused on, he, the Lord called and anointed him to focus on the ministry of the Holy Ghost. Of all the things that churches today focus on, the Lord has called us to focus on the ministry of the Holy Ghost. Obviously, there's a whole Bible of messages and words that needs to be preached, but the, the focus, the heavy, has got to be the ministry of the Holy Ghost. Jesus didn't start his ministry until he was baptized with the Holy Ghost. I mean, Jesus was and is the Word. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was God. The Word was with God. So Jesus is, and, he, and when He walked the earth, He was the Word. You could not know the Bible any more than Jesus did when He walked the earth 2,000 years ago. But yet He still needed the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And if there's one thing today that the devil wants us to step away from, if there's one thing today that a bad spirit of religion wants us to step away from, it's from the ministry ministry of the Holy Ghost. Matthew 3.11, John the Baptist's message here virtually says the same thing. I indeed baptize you with water under repentance, but the he that comes after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire, whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and will gather the wheat into the garner, and he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. So the ministry of the Holy Ghost is the fire of God. God has given us fire so that we can be pulled out of the cares of this world, pulled out of the pressure of this world, pulled out of the things that we see here on this earth that distract us, that pull us away from what God has called us to do and get consumed with the heart of God and what He has for this city and for this nation and for people in your, in your family and in your street and in your neighborhood. God God has given us the fire of the Holy Ghost so that we are not consumed with just the cares and the problems that face us every day. Because if the devil can get you consumed with the problem that's facing you right now, the thing that's staring you right in the face, if the devil can get you totally consumed with, I don't know how I'm going to pay the rent bill by the end of the month, if it can get you totally consumed with what the son or your daughter or your spouse is doing, and now these things are important, God's not putting those aside, but if the devil can get you consumed on those things, if he can get the whole body of Christ consumed on those things and the body of Christ will not impact the city of Big Sandy then the body of Christ will not impact the nation of the United States of America and the devil can take over this nation but God has given us the fire of the Holy Ghost so there's something burning on the inside of us that's greater than the pressure and the problems that are outside of us hallelujah you say amen this morning God has given us the fire of the Holy Ghost just for that I better get some water The ministry of the Holy Spirit. God has given us, I've got three points that I'm going to give you this morning. My message is the ministry of the Holy Ghost. The ministry of the Holy Ghost. Point number one, He is the fire of God. And I'm going to go through these points. And point number two, He is the strength and ability of God. This is the ministry of the Holy Ghost. And number three, he is the revealer of God. 
The Holy, Holy Ghost is the fire of God. Number two, he is the strength and he is the ability of God. And number two, he is the revealer of God. The Holy Ghost, as he comes on you, as he fills you. In Acts chapter 2, they were baptized with the Holy Ghost and fire. But then again, in Acts chapter 4, in verses 29, 30, and 32, the Holy Ghost came again on the people that were there. And it says the room was shaken where they were gathered. And then in Acts chapter 13, 52, it says they were filled with joy and with the Holy Ghost. So the Holy Spirit is to be something that lives on the inside of us, but there are supposed to be special and subsequent and continual outpourings of the Spirit of God, touches of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Ghost is not something that we just get baptized with one time and then we speak in tongues and think that we've got everything that the Holy Ghost has for us. But the Holy Ghost is God's very presence. He is God Himself. He's not lesser than God. It's not like there's God the Father. Number two, there's God the Son. And then down here is the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is just as much God as the Son is. And He's just as much God as the Father is. And He is on the inside of you if you have been baptized with the Holy Ghost. And through that, God has given you His fire to make you different from the rest of this world. I'm telling you, if you're struggling with drugs and alcohol, what you need is the fire of the Holy Ghost. It'll destroy that addiction off of your life just like that. If you're struggling with what God has given you to do, if you feel like you can't fulfill the call of God on your life, if you feel like there are mountains in your life that just are too big to move, then what you need is the strength and the ability of the Holy Ghost that comes through a fresh touch of the Spirit of God. And I'm telling you, your faith is going to begin to get stronger than it was the day before, and you're going to be able to move that mountain and cast it into the sea. If you feel like you don't know what to do, if you feel like you do not understand why things have taken a turn towards the negative, you feel like, if you feel like you do not understand why things have gotten hard in your life, you do not understand what has taken place, the Holy Ghost is the revealer of God. He will tell you everything that God knows about your situation. You can have access to everything that God the Father knows about your situation through the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. So we cannot diminish and, 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 stay, and stay away from the ministry of the Holy Spirit. The devil wants the churches in the body of Christ to pull away from the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And I can tell we're in a place this morning that has not done that at all. Because the presence of the Holy Ghost is so strong here already. Hallelujah. But as in, as in, a, as in, in general, the, ho the Holy Spirit and the ministry of the Holy Spirit has been dwindled down. The spirit of religion, a bad spirit of religion, and the devil has tried to take the ministry of the Holy Ghost and say that, well, he's something that we can only let out once a quarter and touch the people. He, well, we can only have a Holy Ghost service you know, every once in a while. We can't let the Holy Ghost have liberty in our, in our main service as well. We shouldn't. We got to be careful about having the gifts of the Spirit, tongues and interpretation of tongues and the gifts of healing manifest in our services because people may not understand it. Well, I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost is the revealer of God. So He's not to be misunderstood. When people get touched by the Holy Ghost, when people get touched by a fresh touch, or it's the first time or the 30th time, they have instant witness of who God is, and you don't have to get up and explain anything. The spirit of religion wants to tell us that the Holy Ghost is too wild and the fire of God is too crazy to have dominate and be in leadership of all the ministries and be in leadership of our lives. But I'm telling you, that's a lie from the pit of hell. The Holy Ghost is the revealer of God. You want to clarify things, we need to let the Holy Ghost loose and let Him do what He wants to do, praise God. I'm telling you, you want understanding of what's going on in your life. You want breakthrough of what's taking place in your life. You need a touch of the Holy Ghost so the strength of God infuses your veins, infuses your spirit, man, and you'll have the strength to stand up and, and wield the sword of the Spirit and cut that giant's head off. Praise God. I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost has strength beyond strength and strength above strength for you. And it doesn't matter how weary you are, you're going to leave this place full of the strength of God, ready to slay every giant, praise God, that lies in your path. Hallelujah. The ministry of the Holy Ghost. That's what the Holy Ghost is here to do. He is God on the inside of us. And the devil knows if he can come against us and give religious ideas to make us think that we need to diminish that, then the devil can diminish what God is doing here in this earth. But he ain't going to be successful at that. Praise God. Hallelujah. We're not here to let the devil push us around. Amen. Amen. The ministry of the Holy Ghost. He is the fire of God. And you know in Acts chapter 2, just turn there. I want to read that. Acts chapter 2. I, uh, 
I really appreciate, you know, everywhere we travel and preach and, and uh, Bibles on your phones and Bibles on your iPad and on the screens. But I think nothing can replace having a copy of the Word. I just encourage everybody to carry a copy of a book, the Bible book, with you. As you travel, it's going it's, to, you just, it's nothing like having to, that thing to mark up sometimes. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 2. Verse 1, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in accord with one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the house where they were sitting, and there appeared unto them cloven tongues of fire as it sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem devout Jews and men, and it talks about all the people that were there. And then uh, Peter stands up in verse 14 with the eleven, lifted his voice and said unto them, You men of Judea and all that dwell at Jerusalem, be it known unto you and hearken to my words. These people are not drunk as you suppose, seeing as it, as it, it is but the third hour of the day. See, Peter had to stand up and actually clarify what the Holy Ghost was doing. You see, we don't have to, we, it is not, we should not pull the Holy Ghost out in order to relate to people. We need to let the Holy Ghost loose. And then tell people who Jesus is because the Holy Ghost reaches in and grabs the spirits of people and touches the hearts of people in ways that we cannot. We've got to let the Holy Ghost loose in evangelism. We've got to let the Holy Ghost loose in reaching out to a lost and dying world like Peter did and like what Jesus did here on the day of Pentecost. And because people, if they're standing around wondering what's going on with these people, they look like they're drunk. Well, the Holy Ghost can do something like that. And it is holy. It's not something that we have the the the, the the right to say, well, we want this part of the Holy Ghost, but we don't want that part. We don't have the right to say, well, we want a little bit of tongues only on only on a quarterly service, but we can't have them in the Sunday morning service. We can't have the Holy Spirit manifest. We don't have the right to do that. Here in Acts chapter 2, the very first thing that God did was pour out His Spirit to such a degree that people thought pe that others that got hit by the Holy Ghost were drunk. Then that's not church order when you look at any any denominations today. That's what they want to get rid of. But people on the floor looking like they're drunk. If you ever, if anybody's ever seen a drunk person with alcohol, you know you can tell by looking at them something's not quite right. Well, you see somebody is under the power of the Holy Ghost. I'm telling you, you can tell that something is quite right. And they, but they're they're out of their flesh and out of their mind, and the Spirit of God has overcome them. That's exactly the first thing that the Holy Ghost did. The first thing that Jesus did on the very first preaching of the gospel, the very first altar call that was ever given in all of eternity, it took place through the power of the Holy Ghost. And Peter, before he even preached, stood up and, and said, these people are not drunk, as you suppose, because they were under the power of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost was in control. And he gave the first altar call and thousands came to Jesus. The very first time the gospel was preached. We cannot spread the gospel by watering down the gospel. We cannot effectively reach people by, by, by pulling back on what the Holy Ghost is allowed to do in our lives and allowed to do in our services as preachers. I'll tell you right now, as a preacher, it takes faith to press in to the move of the Holy Spirit in your services. Because sometimes I'm up here and God will have me go 5, 10, 15 minutes and not do anything and just stand here and say, I worship you, Lord. I was about to do that before I started preaching the Word and the Holy Ghost told me to preach. But at most times I get up, the first thing I do when I get in the pulpit is I turn the thing over to the Holy Spirit and I may go 5 minutes, I may go 20 minutes. I don't know what the Holy Ghost is going to do. And in my flesh starts to cringe most every single time, but then the glory of God rolls in the building. And I'm telling you, we see people get healed, see people get touched by the Holy Ghost. The flesh as a preacher, I'll tell you right now, the, uh, your flesh as a preacher fights you every time you begin to step out in faith and let the Holy Ghost touch people. Every time I, every time I make a statement, the power of God is here to heal and people are going to be healed. The first, I've, so many times I've stood up in a service and said, the first three people up here are going to be healed of whatever they have. Your flesh does not like to say something like that. Because if you missed God, everybody's going to know it. There ain't no hiding that one. Because everybody can count to three. So if you miss God, everybody's going to know that you miss God. Your flesh doesn't like that kind of a thing. But it's the same way whether you're a preacher or you're not a preacher. Your flesh is going to cringe sometimes against what the Holy Ghost wants to do. How many wants to be, wants to, how many want to go to church and end up on the floor looking like you're a drunk person? Well, some people, well, some people's flesh don't, just don't care, but a lot of people's flesh is like, I don't want that. I love God. I love the Holy Ghost, but I don't want to be down on the floor or whatever it looks like 
to where I'm under the power so much that I look like I'm completely drunk with alcohol because the Holy Ghost has touched me so strong. But that's exactly what the Holy Spirit did. And you know, there's been excess. Every move of God, the devil brings excess. Uh, in the voice of healing movement, you may not have heard about that, but in the 40s and 50s, there's a voice of healing movement, miracles like crazy, the devil brought excess, and people get upset about the excess. Then came the charismatic movement, then came the demonic deliverance movement, how to cast out devils, there was excess with that. Then came the Holy Ghost joy and fire, the word of faith movement, how to stand in faith, and that's born and bred who we are, but then you have people that get into excess about the Holy Ghost movement, and people get into excess about everything, but don't worry about the excess. <clears throat> I'm not going to start partaking of the Word of God and manifesting the fire and the joy and the Spirit of God just because somebody else got it a little bit out of balance. I'm going to still press into the things of God. Hallelujah. So we don't let that get in the way. But Peter here stands up, gives an altar call, and thousands get saved because he let the Holy Ghost loose. And I'm telling you, when God is wanting to move in your life, the Holy Spirit is the one that does it. And He may make your flesh uncomfortable. I'm going to talk about that in just a few minutes. One of my points is the comforter. You know, in John chapters 14, 15, and 16, I'll give you verses. It says that the, the Holy Ghost is the comforter. One of my points is the comforter will make you uncomfortable. Because the comforter is not here to comfort your flesh. Hallelujah. The comforter is not here to comfort your flesh. The comforter is going to make your flesh uncomfortable. <laughs> The comforter is here to comfort your spirit. He's here to strengthen you in the things of God. But he's going to make your flesh uncomfortable. I'm telling you, we got to be hungry for what God wants. Well, I don't want hands laid on me. God, do it some other way. He won't. Well, people are falling out under the power. God, do it some other way. I'll just get it when I get home. I'll go turn on the worship music. You, you won't get it when you get home and go and turn on the worship music. Because if your flesh is too full of pride and you resist what God's doing, through the preacher, through the pastor, and you try to get it at home, the Holy Ghost is going to be standing there saying, the very pride that kept you from receiving it is keeping you from receiving it right now. You need to go back to that church and get the pastor to lay hands on you and go up to the front in front of everybody and let your flesh be made uncomfortable. Because that flesh has got to be crucified. Hallelujah. The comforter will make you uncomfortable. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The Holy Ghost is going to work in your heart. He's going to prod. He's going to grab you. But He's going to push you. And He's going to want to do things on the inside of you that, that make your flesh want to cringe sometimes. But you've got to let Him do it. I'm telling you, how many times even in Tyler we saw some major healings take place. Uh, everybody, is, there was, there's one person that didn't get healed. There's one young man that, there, but everybody else that came for prayer was healed. This one young man that didn't get healed didn't get healed because he refused to receive. He came up. I said, would you raise your hands? He refused to raise his hands. And I even stretched out my hand afterwards to shake his hand, and he wouldn't even shake my hand. He wouldn't raise his hands. He wouldn't let me. I mean, it was. But everybody else got healed. I mean, you, you have to receive a gift, and but everybody else received. I'm telling you, God, God to, to get me in a place where the power of the Holy Ghost can work through me and do things like that. I've grabbed people's uh, crutches away from them and taken their hand and made them walk. When they had a, this one guy had a broken leg in Colleen, Texas, back in 2009. Yeah, and uh, he came forward. He was in football practice and broke his foot, actually, the week before and had gone to the doctor and had x-rays to prove that his foot was broken. And they were, he was going, this is a Sunday morning, he was going back to the doctor, I think, the next Monday or Tuesday to get a cast put on his foot. And I felt the gift of healing and the gift of faith hit at the same time. And when that happens, you feel you feel like God himself, Jesus, is in the room in the flesh. I mean, you feel like you, and it's, it's more than a feeling. It's, it's, it's a spiritual knowing. And so I, I grabbed his crutches and pushed, put them off to the side, and I grabbed his hand. I said, walk with me in Jesus' name. He began to walk back and forth on that foot, perfectly healed by the power of God. But you see... For God to do things like that, it started in me years before by being in services where the Holy Ghost was moving. And when, when God was wanting to do something, 
I jumped in like these people in Acts chapter 2, and I let him do what he wanted to do. I didn't sit there in the service on my hands and say, the Holy Ghost, you, Holy Ghost, I don't want you touching me that way. I'm not going to go get hands laid on me. I don't want the Holy Ghost to do that to me. I don't know about this. So-and-so preacher over there says, you don't have to have that. Well, the Bible, it's right here in the Word, so we need to have it. No, I jumped in, and times when it felt uncomfortable to my flesh in services, I'd be running around the building just crucifying the flesh. I'm telling you, the Holy Holy Ghost hits you, and then here you go under the fire of the Holy Ghost, just making laps around the around the building. The Holy Ghost hits you, and you're jumping up and down, laughing in the spirit. The Holy Ghost hits you, and the, the, you you can't stand up anymore, knocks you down on the ground. That's what the what God wants to do. When the Holy Ghost starts to move, we got to let Him move. And if your flesh is uncomfortable, that's okay, because the Comforter will make your flesh uncomfortable, but He's going to strengthen and put your and touch your spirit on fire with the works and the will of God in your life. Hallelujah. And because I'm, I've always been willing, I believe, to let the Holy Ghost do in me, uh, in services and in times, whatever He wants me to do. Make my flesh as uncomfortable as you want. Oh, Lord, if you want me to run around this place, I'm going to run around this place. If you want me to jump up and shout, I'm going to jump up and shout. I don't care what you want me to do, Holy Spirit, I'm going to do it. Because I've been willing to do that, then the Holy Ghost is able to work through me in services and public scenes and see people get healed by the power of the Spirit because I let Him in and I opened the door for Him before. The Holy Ghost wants to do things in your life, and it is vitally important that you let Him in right now and in services where He's moving and, 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 and He's touching people with the fire of the Holy Ghost. Number one thing about the ministry of the Holy Ghost is that He is the fire of God. Hallelujah. Jesus didn't accomplish in His earthly ministry what He accomplished by trying to be understood. The Bible says that Jesus came into His own and His own received Him not. Can you imagine being God Almighty and people you created don't receive you? What, a, what an element of rejection and, and, and so, many, so many of us today want to try to make and we compromise what the gospel is. We compromise what the Holy Ghost is so that we can make it to be understood. So we can try to be understood. And we want to change what God has done in the New Testament. Change what God did in the book of Acts. Not let it happen today so that we can make it easily to be understood. Jesus didn't accomplish what he did in his earthly ministry by trying to be understood. Jesus, I'm telling you. When, when the woman with the issue of blood was healed, there was a whole mob of people pressing in to touch him. And then when, uh, when the disciples came up to, to Jesus about John the Baptist's death, and he began to tell them that John the Baptist had suffered, that, that he was somebody that was, uh, was uh, preaching the gospel, and he verified John's ministry after the disciples left and brought that report back to John the Baptist. Jesus wasn't trying to appease John the Baptist. You have to go study it out because that's not my message. It's a little rabbit trail. But the disciples of John came to Jesus and said, John is basically, they said, John is wanting to know if you're really the Messiah because John was in jail. And Jesus basically said, go back to the word. And after those disciples left to go bring, bring that report back to John, Jesus began to compliment and praise John. It's like, why didn't you do that when his disciples were here? So that report would have gone back to John. Jesus pointed John back to the Word. He wasn't there, and he encouraged people. He loved on people. God is love. I'm not saying that he's not, but he wasn't there to compromise the message in order to appease and to, and to relate to people because people's minds don't need to be related to. Their spirits and their hearts need to be saved and touched by the power of God so their minds can be renewed. Hallelujah. There was a service when Jesus, before he walked on the water, he walked on the water at night, all day he was doing that service. He was laying hands on people and healing people for about 10 to 12 hours at minimum. Can you imagine announcing a 10 to 12 hour service today here in the U.S.? <laughs> people, would, people would say, no, I'm, I'm actually busy watching the three hour football game. I don't have time for a 10 hour service. Jesus held a 10 hour service and that was just the beginning. The Apostle Paul preached all the way through midnight. A guy named Eutychus fell out the window the Apostle Paul goes and raises him from the dead, sets him up in his chair. Eutychus is alive again, and he continues to preach until sunup. Glory to God. You see, there's a difference in the, in, the, in, the, in the early church and what we have here in the United States today. And there's a, there's a difference in how they impacted their generation 
and how the churches are impacting and how the, how we're we're impacting our generation today because they let the Holy Ghost do whatever he wanted to and needed to do. Jesus didn't accomplish in his earthly ministry what he accomplished by trying to be understood. He did it by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Fire spreads. Without it, we are more comfortable. The fire spreads. You want to know something that spreads? Go light a fire in a dry field. And like the video that you all showed, fire by nature spreads. When fire stops spreading, it starts dying. When fire stops spreading and touching new people, it starts dying. When we let the fire of the Holy Ghost begin to dwindle in our lives, if it's not spreading and touching other people, then the fire of the Holy Ghost starts dying in our own life. You can't have the fire of the Holy Ghost in you and get excited and touched by the power of the Holy Ghost and then say, well, no, I don't want to share it with anybody. I don't want to reach out to anybody. I'm telling you, when the Holy Ghost touches you, when the fire of the Holy Ghost touches you, there's going to be, there's going to be a mighty touch for you, but there's also going to be a mighty touch through you to other people people that you can't stop. That's why my wife Riley and I are here this morning. I'm telling you sometimes it's not easy to step out in the ministry, but we're here because there's a fire burning in our hearts. That's why Pastor Anthony is, is pastor in this church because there's a fire burning in his heart. And that's why we've got leaders here. And I'm telling you when the fire of the Holy Ghost touches you, it has got to spread out to other people. And if you don't let it spread, then the fire in you is going to start to die. We have got to fan the flame of the fire of the Holy Ghost. We have got to step out and touch other people. Somehow, some way. I don't know how it is. But when the fire of God touches you, God has somebody else for you to touch. And it's not going to be the way that David King does it. David King does television and crusades. Most people on here aren't called to do television and crusades. But the fire of God's got something for you. And it's going to be a burning in your heart. Like for, for months, my wife Riley's had this ministry named Embrace Grace Burning just kept coming up in her heart and God's opened doors for her there. It was that's the, the, the Holy Ghost gets on the inside and he plants things in your heart and all of a sudden he opens up a connection. I don't know how it's going to come through you, but the Holy Ghost has people that he wants to touch through you that I can't touch, that Pastor Anthony can't touch, and it's going to take place by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Fire spreads without it. Without fire, we are more comfortable, but we're not growing, and neither is the kingdom of God. The devil knows if he can shut the fire of God down, then he can shut the growth of the kingdom of God down. I'll stand by that statement the rest of my life in ministry. The devil knows if he can shut the fire down, that he can shut the growth of the kingdom of God down. And what will happen is churches will only grow by taking members from other churches. They won't, they won't grow by pulling people out of the ghettos. They won't grow by pulling people out of the pot houses and the drug houses and pulling people out of gangs and pulling people out of bars because they don't have the fire of God to impact anybody because they compromised it for the sake of religion. But I'm telling you, who cares about that? We want the Holy Ghost. We want what God did in the book of Acts. It was good enough then and it's good enough now. Hallelujah. The ministry of the Holy Ghost. Number one, He is the fire of God. And we need that fire of the Holy Spirit burning on the inside of us. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He is the fire of God. I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost gets on the inside of you and begins to burn. And then all of a sudden, vision opens up. And there's something in your heart that you didn't see before. All of a sudden, there's a way to fulfill the call of God that you didn't see before. You're like, Lord, there's no way I can do this. There's no way I can start a church. There is no way I can step out and do this. Nobody knows who I am. But all of a sudden, the fire of God's burning. And He begins to put that in your heart. Over and over and it begins to rise up in your heart over a period of days, weeks and months. And all of a sudden there's something burning on the inside of you. And then bang, God opens a door. And what happened is the fire of the Holy Ghost is burning in your heart. And he's spreading that fire to other people. We've got a crusade coming up in Fort Worth, Texas, our hometown. And I had earlier this year, I had no intention of doing a crusade in Fort Worth. And uh, but that's what happened is the Holy Ghost began to drop that in me. Over a period of all, all through the entire month of January, I just kept seeing and thinking without even trying to seeing and thinking about doing our gospel festival in Fort Worth, Texas. So next year we're doing Tyler again here and in, uh, in, in probably May, 
get a little cooler temperature, and then in the fall we're going to do Fort Worth, and we're looking at the venue there. It's a little more challenging in Fort Worth because there's there's a lot of more a lot more Antichrist stuff. Anyway, <laughs> it's not what I'm here to preach about, but pray for us for the right venue in Fort Worth. We need a breakthrough. We really do. God's going to give it to us. Um, I could, and I, actually, I just want to wrap a child on that for a minute. Just pray for us on that because. You know, here in, here in, you know, I say here in Tyler, I'm talking about East Texas, Bergfeld Park, you know, we had no problem getting that venue for the gospel festival. But out in, in Fort Worth, the uh, the number one public venue is Panther Island Pavilion, and they won't even talk to you on the phone. And they have had the most antichrist, liberal, uh, LGBT flaunting events there, music festivals the, the the audio they they have no audio limit. This is right in the middle of Fort Worth. They have no audio limit on how loud they can crank up their sound. So you have these rock bands that are just full of the devil and gigantic crowds showing up. And it's like I'm as an evangelist, I don't tolerate that. There's too much fire in me to sit by and let our own city be taken by that kind of crowd. So somehow, some way, God's got to open the door for that to that venue for us because I've talked to him a few times and basically they've told me no. And uh, so pray for favor for us on that because we need that venue to open up. That's the fire. That's what the fire of God's doing in us. I tell you, it makes the fire of God will make you want to fight. Forget being a little pansy Christian that will just is looking for somebody to tell you no so you can say, all right, well I tried. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, City of Fort Worth, that I was an inconvenience for even talking to you on the phone. I apologize. We're not here to apologize for the gospel. We're not here to back down on a no. I'm telling you, praise God, when God's spoken to us, don't even try to tell us no. Because we know how to punch back by the power of the Holy Ghost. Somehow, some way, that door is going to open for us. Praise God. Hallelujah. And it's taken a fight. It's, it's taken a fight. But that's what, that's what we're here for is the fight of faith. Glory to God. And number two, the Holy Ghost is the strength and ability of God. Number three, he is the revealer of God. I'm going to talk to you about these for just a few minutes. Number two, he is the strength and ability of God. Turn with me to Ephesians 3. Hallelujah. Ephesians 3, 16. Some of you need strength this morning. You need strength this morning on what God has, is doing in your life. You need strength this morning for your family. You need strength this morning for something, a battle that you're fighting in your personal life. You need strength. Ephesians 3.16, Paul says that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit, by the Holy Ghost in your inner man. The Holy Ghost will give you strength. When, you have, when you're fighting the fight of faith and you feel like you can't go another day, when bad news has been heaped upon bad news, I'm telling you the Holy Ghost will give you strength to stand up and begin to praise God. You can, let's keep reading this verse here. In verse 17, I, I'm going to reread 16 again, that He would grant you according to the riches of His glory to be strengthened with might by His Spirit in the inner man, that Christ will dwell in your hearts by faith that you being rooted and grounded in love. So verse 17 talks about faith, that Christ dwell in your heart by faith. So Christ is able to reveal and dwell in your heart to a greater degree because your faith has been strengthened and because you're rooted and grounded in love. When the Holy Ghost touches you, when you're in the presence of God and worshiping God and you persevere in the presence of God and you let the Holy Spirit do what He wants to do and you give Him time and not just five minutes, but you give Him 20, 30, 45 minutes, an hour when you can in prayer and in a service and you let Him, then He's going to pour into you and you're going to have strength begin to get poured into you at the same time. Where you felt weakness, where you felt like you can't figure out how to do this, where you feel like there's no way, there's no answer, there's no open door left, this is impossible, God, the Holy Ghost is going to give you strength. The Holy Ghost is going to give you strength when temptation comes your way. And somebody that's good standing against a temptation to light up a cigarette, take another drink, the Holy Ghost will give you strength in that time, but you got to yield to the Holy Ghost. You can't just say, well, I was touched with the Holy Ghost five years ago and He's not giving me strength today. No. You've got to get in the presence of God and let Him strengthen you. Let Him pour into you and let Him pour strength into you. And what's going to happen to you is what Paul says in verse 16. You're going to be strengthened with might 
by the Holy Ghost. He's going to pour strength into you to carry out the will of God. He's going to pour strength into you to do what you could not have done before. I believe that's the same strength that he gave Samson in the Old Testament. Samson, I believe, was a type and shadow in the realm of the natural of who we are in the spirit. You've got that Samson strength on the inside of you and your spirit man right now. And when the Holy Ghost touches you, I'm telling you, strength just gets poured into you. When you feel like you've reached the end and there's no way, I'm telling you, this year God has had us stepping out in faith greater than we ever have before. And there have been like four or five times when I've reached the end. And I'm not talking about I was going to quit the ministry, nothing crazy. But I reached the end of my strength. And I didn't know how this was going to happen. I don't know. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know and see in my eyes anything but total discouragement and total impossibility. And I set myself to prayer. And sometimes it took 30, 45 minutes. Sometimes it's taken an hour. Sometimes it's taken two hours. Sometimes it's taken five, six, seven, eight hours over a period of several days. Just getting in the presence of God until strength came. Until this verse here in verse 16 began to take place that God strengthened me with might. He begins to pour might on the inside of you. When you begin to, when you get strengthened by the Holy Spirit, and He began to give me answers, and sometimes it wasn't answers, but I just I knew what step to take next, and then a week later I know the next step to take, and then a week later I know the next step to take, and He gives me strength by the Spirit of God, and He'll do the same thing for you. The whole the ministry of the Holy Ghost is to give you strength. Hallelujah. We do not live by, we, we are not of this world and we don't live by the, the, as the King James says, the rudiments of this world or the manners and the ways of this world. We, we don't have to live by the finances of this world. We don't have to live by the publicity and the advertising and marketing principles of this world. We don't have to live by what's accepted in this world. The Holy Ghost gives you fire to go do it and then he gives you the strength and the ability to carry it out. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost has strength for every single one of you this morning where you have where you fight in a battle that you feel like you can't win. You're fighting a battle and you may have even let go on your faith and, and just decided I can't do it. I, my, I just my hope faith is the substance of things hoped for. You may just have felt like I, I can't hope anymore. My hope has been destroyed. I can't release and open my heart for that anymore. My hope has been discouraged too much. The Holy Ghost has strength for you right now to strengthen your heart to strengthen your hand in God, to strengthen you so you open up your heart again all the way to what God wants to do. You say, that's going to make me vulnerable. It's going to make it hurt again. Well, you're in good luck this morning, and it's more than luck. The Holy Ghost is the comforter for that because the Holy Ghost will comfort your heart. I said earlier that the comforter will discomfort you. He'll discomfort your flesh, but he will comfort your heart. The Holy Ghost will comfort your heart. Where you feel it's impossible, the Holy Ghost will comfort your heart. Hallelujah. That's when His strength gets poured in, He comforts your heart. Hallelujah. That's the comforter. Where are these verses I've got? John 14, 16, verse 18, 26. There's three verses right there that say that He is the comforter. John 15, verse 26 and John 16, verse 7. There's five verses right there in three chapters that refer to the Holy Spirit as the Comforter. He loves you. He's not here to pamper your flesh because your, uh, your flesh is an avenue by which you operate here in this earth and really no more. And it serves a good purpose. But the real you is not your flesh. Someday all of us are going to die either by way of rapture, we're going to go up, or we're going to go by the way of the grave, and our flesh is going to be laid aside. The real you is a spirit. You are a spirit man, and you have a heart, and the Holy Spirit loves you. He's not here to pamper your flesh, but He loves you, the real you, your heart, you as a spirit person. And He's here to comfort and to strengthen you on the inside so you can do what you could not do before. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I just didn't see it like a Rocky Balboa movie. If you ever seen the, the first three or four movies he made, you know, in all of his movies, the main thing is he gets in, he gets in a fight. That he never beats anybody in the first round because that would be too easy. And so many, so many times the fight of faith is that way for us. It's like, why can't we just stand up? Devil, I rebuke you in Jesus' name and everything's great. 
It's like, why can't it happen that way? Well, maybe it's just because it'd be too easy. God has us fight the fight of faith and go for a long period of time. It's like he's given us the fruit of long-suffering. How many in here has ever done a thorough word study in, uh, on the fruit of long-suffering? See, nobody wants to study the fruit of long-suffering. <laughs> but it's in there all the same. That God has given us the fruit of long-suffering. So when we need to suffer long and maintain our faith, we have the strength of the Holy Ghost to do it. But it's like a long, those, those Rocky Balboa movies. And all of a sudden in the 12th round, he's been taking this beating. And then the music starts to play, the Eye of the Tiger or whatever it is. And then he starts throwing punches. And then he starts talking trash to the guy. Come on, is that all you got? And then the guy's tired and Rocky just just pummels him at the very end. That strength and endurance, I'm telling you, is coming on you this morning, praise God, because he gives you strength on the inside. He pours out strength into your heart and into your spirit, the strength of the Spirit of God. God is not weary, hallelujah, and he does not faint, neither are you, praise God. God gives you the Holy Spirit. The ministry of the Holy Spirit is the fire of God, but the second thing is he's the strength and ability of God. Zechariah 4, 6, it's not by might nor by power, but by the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. And number three, he is the revealer of God. This is so important right here. He is the revealer of God. And you may be sitting there thinking, I don't need God revealed to me anymore. I need the answers to this problem revealed to me. Hello. God is the answer to that problem. Well, I don't need God revealed to me. I just need answers on, on how to handle this situation or this, this person or my work situation or what to do because I lost my job and there are no jobs around for that contract out my contracting field. I need answers. I don't know. Jesus in him, Jesus by him all things consist. And let me turn to that in Colossians here. You, the, the in him revelation in Colossians, he's got like 20 verses in there talking about in Christ. Let's see, where is this verse? In verse 3 of Colossians chapter 2, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Every answer that you need, God knows everything about your situation. How many of you would like to have an appointment with God this afternoon at 3 o'clock where you can sit down and he knows everything about your situation, what's happening now and what is going to happen for the rest of your life. And you could ask him any question that you would want to ask. Lord, what about my marriage? Why is this going so rocky? What is going on, Lord? I thought I did what you told me. What about the business? What about this ministry? What about our kids? What about this, this situation at work? What, you know, all these things, we, we, it's like, we, why is this happening? Lord, why are we just doing like normal everybody else and it's not working for us? Everybody else gets an easy thing, an easy breakthrough, and it's not happening for us. What is going on, Lord? How many of you would like to just sit down with the Lord and be able to ask him any question? upon question, upon question, and, and learn everything that he knows about you and your situation. Well, I'm telling you, you can. God is, the, you know, that, that old saying, which is not in the Word. Uh, I'm trying to even think of what it is because I don't know it that well because it's not in the Word. But God's works are mysterious as, or God's, God works in mysterious ways. His wonders to perform. That's, a, that's not, I would say it's a lie from hell. It really is. But it's not true because right here in verse 3, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. So God has put all the answers in Jesus. And the word says in Colossians that you are complete in Christ Jesus. In verse 9, look down there for, and if, you're, if you followed me to Colossians 2 in verse 9, for in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and you are complete in him. So all of the answers are in Jesus. And verse 9, in Jesus dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And you are complete in Jesus. So every answer that you need for your life, everything you could possibly want to know is in Jesus. And he has given the Holy Ghost to you to reveal it to you. Hallelujah. So the Holy Ghost, number one, is the fire of God. Number two, he's the strength. And the ability of God, and number three, he is the revealer of God. This is why the ministry of the Holy Ghost is so important. So I'm going to go to Ephesians 1.17. I'm going to wrap up this message. And we're going to, I'm going to pray for people. Ephesians 1.17. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, given to you the Spirit as the Holy Ghost. 
of wisdom and revelation, what? In the knowledge of Him. In the knowledge of Him. God not only wants to have give, has not only given you access and said that you can talk to the Holy Ghost about these things, but He has made the Holy Ghost given to you as the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. All the wisdom of God. All the wisdom of God for your life, which covers your present and your future, and all the knowledge of God that He knows. God wants you to know what to do, but He wants you to know all the surrounding circumstances behind it. He wants you to have thorough knowledge of what has taken place in your life, so there are no questions. And if you ask God a question that He doesn't answer, then just trust Him with that, because He knows what He's doing. Sometimes we ask questions that, sometimes we ask the wrong question. <laughs> we got to trust God with that, so you can't ask the wrong question and expect to get an answer from the Lord. He just won't answer you. But get the spirit of wisdom and revelation because God knows what you need to know and He'll reveal to you everything about your life and your ministry that you need to know through the Holy Spirit. That's the ministry of the Holy Spirit that He has poured out on us and why it's so important that we be yielded to the Spirit of God that when He's moving, we let Him touch us. Well, I'm telling you, when God's touching people that you just jump right in and say, Holy Spirit, I'm next. Touch me. Whatever you want to do, however you want to do it, Holy Spirit, touch me. Hallelujah. How many of you learned something this morning through that message? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Why don't you stand up on your feet this morning? Hallelujah. Just close your eyes right now. I'm going to... We're going to pray. I'm going to, I want to ask if there's anybody here. Everybody here might already know the Lord, but I just want to make sure. If there's anybody here, if you were to die today, and you're not totally certain that you would go straight to heaven, then I want to pray with you right now. I'm telling you, the Lord is just taking a moment here in the service just for you. If there's any doubt in your heart whatsoever, if you were to die today, if there's any doubt that you would go straight to heaven, then I want to pray with you. And I want to pray for you. The Bible says in Romans 10, 9 and, uh, 10, 9 and 10, that if you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth that you shall be saved. I want you to know Jesus died on the cross for you and He has risen from the dead just for you. And if there's any doubt right now, if you don't know for sure, then I want to pray with you and pray for you this morning. The Lord speak into your heart. Hallelujah. And there's a second category of person that I want to pray with this morning. You may say, David, I know that I'm going to heaven, but I know that my heart is not right with the Lord. I know, I feel, David, I feel like if I keep going on the path that I'm on, that I may not make heaven. I know, I feel like I'm going now, but I'm on the wrong path, and my heart is not right with God. And there are things in your life that have become bigger than God. Sin in your life, wrong relationships, and issues, and, and uh, you've maybe been offended at at, at a ministry and you quit going to church or anything. I don't, I don't know what it could be, but there are things, there might, there, you may be here this morning and there are things in your heart that are bigger than God and you know your heart is not right with God. If you're one of those two categories, I believe the Lord's speaking to your heart right now and it's time to make a move. The Lord wants to make a move to you. You make a move towards Him. He hung on that cross naked, battered and bruised just for you. Humbled Himself and it takes humility to respond to the to the call of the gospel. God's calling you right now. If you're one of those two categories, number one, either you know you're not going to heaven, you're not totally certain that you would make heaven and you need to give your life to Jesus. Or number two, you feel like you are going to heaven, but you know your heart is not right with God and things have gotten bigger in your life than Jesus has and you need to get that right and come back to Jesus and rededicate your heart. It's time right now. I want to pray with you in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father, for touching people. So if you're any of those categories right now, I'm going to count to three and I want you to raise your hand. Number one, you don't, you know your heart's not right with God. If you were to die today, you're not going to heaven. Or number two, you feel like you are going to heaven, but your heart is not right. You need to get, rededicate your life. If that's you right now, I want you to raise your hand. One, two, three. Just raise your hand in this building. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for these hands going up for touching people. If there's anybody else here this morning and that, that altar call is speaking to you, then I want you to raise your hand right now so I can see it and pray with you and pray for you. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you for that hand going up. Thank you, Jesus, for those hands going up. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for, for these people responding to the, 
to the goodness of your gospel. I thank you, Lord Jesus. Your mercy endures forever, Lord. You don't even see the sin. You don't see the mistakes. You don't see the trouble. You just see them and how much you love these precious people. That's all you have for everyone here in this room. Everybody that's raised their hand. God, Jesus only sees love for you. That's all that he is feeling and seeing is love for you. If you raise your hand, you can put it down. I want to ask just one more time if there's anybody else. If you haven't already responded, raise your hand right now. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for touching people. Those of you who raised your hand, I want you to take the next bold step. to Step out of your seat and come down here to the front at the altar with me. And I'm going to wait on you. Y'all have a little bit of worship you can play back there? Yeah, go ahead and do that. If you raise your hand, just take that next bold step and come out of your seat and stand up here with me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Why don't you all give them a hand clap this morning? Encourage them. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Just stand right up here. If there's anybody else, if you raise your hand, you need to get right with the Lord Jesus. Just come on down here to the front. Stand with me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for touching people. Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross, for taking our sin, sickness, disease, and our shame. Thank you, Jesus, for raising from the dead for us. I thank you, Lord, for working in the hearts of people this morning in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And here's what I want to do. I want to ask everybody out there to stretch your hands up here to the front. And those of you up here, just keep your eyes closed, and I want you to pray this prayer after me out loud, and mean it with your heart. The Bible says if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is risen from the dead, that you shall be saved. And everybody in the congregation, repeat this after us. Say this out loud. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, Dear Lord Jesus I come to you right now, I come to you right now. and I believe, I believe that you died on the cross for me. And that you are risen from the dead. And that I am risen with you. So come into my heart. And be my Lord and Savior. I give you my life. Let me never be the same. Change me, Lord Jesus. I am saved. I am born again. And I am going to heaven. Jesus name. Jesus name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now, want everybody just thank the Lord with us this morning. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I want to pray for some more people this morning. If you're here this morning, you say, David, I just need prayer. I just need the touch of the Holy Ghost that you've been preaching about. David, I need strength. I need healing in my heart. Then I want to pray for you right now. If that's you, you say, David, I just need prayer. I just need the strength. I just need a touch from God. And I'm hungry for that. If that's you, come on down to the front. And I want to pray for another category of people this morning. If you're here and you haven't been baptized in the Holy Ghost and spoken in tongues, then I want to pray for you also. And maybe everybody, I don't know, but if you if you want if you haven't been baptized in the Holy Ghost, just you go ahead and also step out of your seat and come down here to the front. I want to pray with you and pray for you. And the Holy Ghost is going to fill you. It's the easiest thing you'll ever do. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Go ahead and crank up the music a little bit. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just raise your hands, those of you up here. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Strength by the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Fresh touch. Hallelujah. 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 Answers and direction. I rebuke the fear and confusion attack. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Fresh anointing. Fresh anointing. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Rebuke the lie of the devil. Thank you, Jesus. I just I believe most of that attack is just a lie of the devil. Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Fresh touch of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name. Come by the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Fresh touch of the Spirit. Hallelujah. 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 The fire of the Holy Ghost. Oh, increase, enlarge, and expand you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The fire of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Fresh touch. in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Fresh touch of the Spirit of God. The strength of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. The strength of the Holy Ghost. Fresh touch of the Spirit on you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 In Jesus' name. Fresh touch of the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Glory to God. Fresh anointing on you. Hallelujah. Man, that's the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That's the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, Break the strongholds of the past. Hallelujah. Even the sun says, praise, free indeed. Hallelujah. Mighty anointing on your life. There's a mighty anointing on your life. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You are stepping into it. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's praying in tongues. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Y'all can grab your seats. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I'm sorry. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, this precious lady. Touch of the Holy Ghost on you. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Strength. Strength by the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Fresh anointing on you. Jesus' name. tonight, same thing, and then in two weeks, Thursday night, Friday, Saturday night, yes. just across the road here, we have a book table, some, some DVDs back there, some messages, CDs, five dollars, things like that, uh, about to receive the offering, uh, you, if you have just a credit card or debit card you want to give, then we do have a machine back there that will process that for you, or you can buy a DVD with that, so whatever works best for you, and uh, we do have some envelopes here. Uh, if you want to take one of those and join the ministry, partner with the ministry, or or just send in an offering later on, that's fine too. We appreciate that. You can't give into this house, Solid Rock Refuge, or our ministry, Harvest Ministries, without being blessed. It'll bless us, but it's also going to bless you. You can't sow without reaping. Hallelujah. Amen. So, Pastor Anthony, if you want to. Come on up. Y'all give him a hand clap this morning. Hear me, 
my children. Know that I am here. Know that I am with you. It is I who is speaking to you. Listen to what I have said. Listen to what I have shown you. Pay attention, for I am moving in this house. I am moving in this area. Light my fire. Light my fire. Show forth the goodness that I have shown to you. Receive this day, and I will always, always be faithful to show you what is the next step. I will show you what is the next step. Listen and hear my voice. Hallelujah. Glory to God. One of the things that I want to share is, 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 is I don't know if this was their intentions or not. I, I believe it might have been, but this is the first fruits, the first taste of what's coming two weeks from now. This is just, it's not even a full appetizer. And I want to encourage, at least, I would definitely want to encourage the, the people of, of this body of believers. You have a part when you go to these meetings. Your faith joined in in that meeting, joined in with the ministry, joined in with the, the, the anointing of God upon the gift of God. can put things over. I don't... A, I, I want you to come. I know that some of y'all's schedule may be conflict, but if you can come, do come. And come expecting. But don't just... Ex I mean, yes, expect God to touch you, but get beyond yourself. Expect God to touch those around you. Believe God for the anointing to minister to others. Believe God for every altar call. Believe God for every... That the angels of God are drawing the, every person in. We see... It's not about just the man and woman of God show up and they do their thing. It's not... If, if that was all there was to it. We're a body. We work together. And so... Our part, not just to be pew warmers, but to get our faith in there. And let me tell you, if you're believing, if the compassion of God will flow through you to believe for others, it will touch you. Because as the scripture says, God is not mocked. Whatever someone sows, they reap. And if you're taking the time to show up at a meeting and you say, I'm just here to love on God and to believe God with the, the rest of the people of God and with the man and woman of God for God to touch this community and God to touch those people, that is a precious seed you're sowing. And what you may find out is while you're there attending to the things of God, you'll go home and find out God was attending to your things. As you get your heart on the things of God, and, you, and God sees your heart on His things, you'll find out when you get back, the very things that, that 
you actually got to use God to some extent to get comfort and some distraction from the things that have been in your face for that period of time was getting resolved because you were re taking care of God's things. This is scriptural. Not only did I give you one word with, in Galatians, but the, in Matthew it says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Glory to God. Thank you all for being here today.